Houdini 21 has added a new Material X node that will allow us to load in Primvars to use as file paths for our materials, which allows us to do some cool things with some procedural texturing. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So I'm going to drop down a cop net because we're going to need some materials to start off with or some images or textures for our materials. So let's drop down a constant, set this to RGB, make a copy of this. Let's set one to be red and we'll set the other one to be blue. And then we can drop down a fractal noise for the third and we'll leave it like that. So let's drop down a wrap image output. Let's wire this in here and I'm just going to call this red. Save the image to disk. I'll call this one blue. Render to disk. And then the last one we can call noise. And render that to disk. So let's create some geometry and then we'll set up this inside of this with some just basic grid geometry. And then we'll look at a actual like use case for it. So I want to show kind of how this works and then we'll build out uh, a more procedural setup that we can actually use on our models. So let's set this grid to be a two by two. Let's do a UV flatten after this to give us some UVs. Do a copy and transform. Set this to be three and then translate this by three as well. And we can do a match size. So we have this set to the center now. I'm gonna use a connectivity node to give us a primitive attribute that's going to split these objects into different objects. So we'll do a attribute of name and then we'll make this a string and piece will work. So when we jump back up to our stage, we've got some three different pieces here. So once we dive back inside, we need to create some primvars that are going to drive our file paths. So let's create some attributes here. So we'll do an attribute create. We'll call this texture path. We'll make sure that this is a primitive attribute and we'll make sure it is a string. And then we need to set our file paths. So let's do dollar hip. And then we put those in a comp folder and then let's give it the proper name. So red.exr. Let's set this to piece zero and let's make, we're going to make three different copies of this node and we will name them accordingly. So we'll do blue and then we'll make a third one. Set this to be on piece two. And then we'll call the noise texture here. So if I look at our texture paths here, they're going to evaluate to the proper paths. If I go back, up to our stage. I can click on one of our pieces. I can scroll down and you can see that we have our texture path. If I click on that, you can see all of our different paths here. So let's set up our materials. So let's do a material library. Let's dive inside. Let's drop down a Karma material builder. And I do need to point out that this is actually going to only work for Karma CPU. So if you're using, or sorry, Karma XPU, if you're using Karma CPU, it is not going to work. So let's come in here and drop down a material X image. And this is what we would normally use. We put in our file path and that would drive our base color, but normally we would need one for each of these different pieces. With this new node, it's called the material X geometry property value uh, uniform. So with the geometry property value, this is what we used before to read in the different attributes. So you notice that we have all the different attribute types, but we don't have string in here. So we need this property uniform value node to read in a string. This is what's new to Houdini 21. So we have a signature here. We've got file name and string. Well, let's go ahead and leave that on file name. And then we need to feed it the, for the geometry property, we need to give it that texture path, that prem bar that we want to actually read in. And you can set a default color space if you want uh, our default values here. But let's read in this def uh, the value into our file. And then I can come back up here. We'll autofill our materials. We will assign this to our SOP create. And you see that our 
grids turn a blackish color here. But if I come over to XPU, it's going to load up our textures accordingly. And I can actually come in here, if I come to our SOP Create, I can right click on our texture path, click Edit Property. And if I wanted to, we're on piece zero here, so we need to come to our last one, which is our red one. If I wanted to, I can change this to be a different texture. So we have our blue now. If I go ahead and un, um, unchain that, I can put this after our material library. And you can see that once we switch to that, it's going to display that with the changed texture path. So I just wanted to point out that we can actually change our texture paths with this method after our material library if we want. So you could split out um, maybe different shots to have different uh, materials using this method. And you could change all your different materials um, using this after your material library or after your materials are already assigned. So as long as it's before your render, you're going to be all set to go. Well, let's take a look at some actual geometry and how to set this up in a more procedural manner. So let's do a SOP create, dive inside, let's create a file, and I'm going to load in a couple of tree assets that I had prepared. So we'll do tree one and tree two, and I'm just going to name these. And I actually have these broken out into different groups. So I've got bark and leaves. Let's just put everything under, uh, let's do tree, whoops, tree underscore bark. Or actually, not underscore, but break that into there. Let's do a second one for our leaves. Let's do slash tree slash leaves. And both of these files actually have the same groups, so this will work for both. And then let's transform this over. So let's move this one over here. And we can merge these together. So let's go ahead and set up our file paths or our prem bars in a somewhat procedural manner using an attribute wrangle. So I'm going to set this to be on our primitives. Go ahead and pop this out. And I'm going to create some different inputs for us that will allow us to do this um, and change materials kind of quickly. And you can build this out as an HDA that has a bunch of different options. Um, and it would you know, work really, really well for this type of a, a setup. But let's drop down a string. Let's name it path. And we're going to set that equal to a channel string. We'll call this texture underscore path. Let's do a second one. We'll call this one name. And we'll, again, we'll call this one file path. And then let's do a third one. We're going to call this one extension or our file extension, CHS. And then let's do file underscore extension. And then we need to actually create our prim bars. So at this point, I want to take a look at our actual textures and point out how the naming conventions are going to be important for this. So here I have our different textures, and you can see that they all have the same sort of naming convention here. So we have, for all of our tree, all of our bark textures, which is going to be these this bump and base color, we have tree underscore one, and then we have the underscore with the type of map that it is. So underscore base color, in this case, underscore bump. And then for the leaves, we have the same thing with tree underscore one, underscore leaves, and then underscore base color, and then we have bump, and we have opacity. And then we're just changing the names for our second tree as well. But the file naming conventions are all going to be the same, and that's going to be important when we go to build out our actual prim bars. So let's do S at, and we'll call this base color. And we'll set this equal to, and this is going to be where we actually build our file path. So we're going to call this path, so we're going to take our file path, we're going to append the name to the end of that, and then we're going to append a underscore base color, because that is how we had our file named, and we're going to append the extension to the end of that. And we're going to do the same thing with our bump, 
So we'll call this one bump. And we will say bump here as well. So now if I click accept here, I can open our file pass or create our, our variables there. And we're going to put in our texture path here. So let's do dollar hip. And then I had these put into a texture folder, into a texture folder, excuse me. So we'll leave that as is. And then the file path, if you remember, we said tree underscore one. And then we need to add in our file extension, which was .jpg for all of these. And the texture path is actually textures, not texture. So let's make a copy of this. And let's change this one to tree two, because this was our tree two. And let's make a copy of this now. And we're going to make this one for the leaves. So let's get rid of the bark here. Assign this to the leaves. And we need to add in another prim var, which is going to be our opacity. So let's add that there. Let's add the opacity there. And then we can make a copy of this for this stream as well. And again, we need to change this to tree two. Now let's go ahead and bring over our material library here. I'm going to clear that out. And if we look actually at our geometry, you see that we have our prem bar, which has our base color, our bump, and opacity here, with all of our file paths evaluated. So let's take this and let's dive inside. I'm going to call this one bark. Let's just do bark. Let's dive inside here. And we need to change our prem bar in our geometry property uniform value from that texture path to our base color. All right, so now we have this named base color. We need to make a copy of both of these, actually. And with this one, we need to set up the bump prem bar. And let's make sure this is a float. Uh, move these over. Let's make this a material X bump. Are this into our height. Let's do our normal. Sorry, not our normal map, but our normal. Wire this into our normal, and then we can wire this into our normal here. So now if we come back up to our stage, let's go ahead and autofill these materials, and let's go ahead and we can assign it to our tree here. And if I go ahead and jump over to Karma XPU, we get something here. So we have our materials that are actually going to be assigned to our, our um, bark here, which is where we want. We need to set up our leaves here as well because we have that bark material just kind of working across these which is not what we're looking for so and actually that comes down to this stop create inside of the attribute wrangles we need to change these file paths from tree underscore one to tree underscore and leaves for both these and tree underscore two leaves because that is what we had the leaves named as so which that should change things if we look at our karma xpu here you see that we're going to have things more appropriately assigned here so let's jump back here and let's actually we'll add in an environment light here and i'll just load in what i have um, and then we can come into our materials and if I just go ahead and render, you can see we have our materials somewhat assigned, but we are missing our opacity maps for our leaves. So part of this is, this is one of the kind of caveats of this. So if I come back in here, and if I were to assign an opacity here, so let's add in this, make this a color, and we'll call this opacity. Add our geometry to our opacity. You see everything disappears here. And if I look at Karma XPU, we have a slight issue, which is our bark is going to disappear. So that is one caveat of this workflow, is we do need to make sure that anything that is going to have the same maps, we can put under one material. But if it's going to need a third or an, another map um, that's not included with your other ones, you either need to make those maps or you need to make a new material for those, which is going to be what is more than likely what you want to do. So we'll leave this one as is. We'll call this one leaves. 
And let's come back to our bark one and let's just delete those nodes that we created. So let's come back to our assign. Let's just um, autofill those for our bark. But instead of the tree, we'll assign it just to our bark. And for our leaves, let's assign that to our leaves. Now you can see that our leaves actually disappear from our view here. If I come to Karma XPU though, you can see that we have those opacity maps that are being applied properly. So now we have everything set up here. So this is going to be something I think that is going to be pretty useful for some um, like scatter setup. So anywhere time that you're going to be scattering like trees or rocks, a bunch of different assets that are going to have uh, basically the same maps. This is something that uh, I think that you can use and it's going to save you a bunch of time without having to create all those materials. Like I said, you can set up that attribute wrangle in here. In Vex, you could create an HDA out of something like this. Oops. And then that would um, give you the ability to create these maps super quickly or the file paths super quickly for your geometry on all of your geometry and get everything rendering super, super quick. So anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the comments. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.